Tebow is a New York Jet. Like, love, or hate this trade? Stephen A. Smith, this is terrible <laughs> for Mark Sanchez. Uh-oh. Book it. By no later than midseason, Mark Sanchez will crumble under the pressure of having Tim Tebow waiting in the wings on the Jets' sideline. And Tim Tebow will get his shot at being the starting quarterback, the starting quarterback of the New York Jets. And he will seize that opportunity just the way he seized it in Denver last season when he took over for Kyle Orton at one and four. And all he'll do is win games. Tim Tebow has been set free. This is the best place Tebow could have landed. This, this is the Jets stealing Tim Tebow, who will change their life and give them a better shot at winning the first Super Bowl since Joe Namath. Because, thank you, God, Tim Tebow now actually has a defense behind him, a defense to fall back on, a defense that was ranked fifth, not 20th, the way the Broncos was, a defense that will not get blown off the field twice by New England and blown off the field by Detroit and blown off the field even in Buffalo, for God's sake. And thank you, God. Tim Tebow now has a head coach who actually wanted him, who believes in the way that Tim Tebow plays, because Rex Ryan, a brilliant defensive coach, just wants to what? Ground and pound. Rex Ryan would be completely happy if Tim Tebow went two for eight and threw the beautiful home run pass that won the game against the Chiefs in Kansas City. Rex Ryan doesn't want to throw it all over the lot 40 times a game with a mistake maker like Mark Sanchez. Rex Ryan got Tebowed right under his upturned nose. Tim Tebow went straight down the field against the defenses he was calling. 12 plays, 95 yards in Denver on Thursday night. Remember that game? And Rex Ryan stepped back. Remember that look on his face? I don't know if we have that, but that look on Rex's face when Tebow ran 20 yards for the winning touchdown, he was befuddled. He was dumbfounded. He said to himself, this guy's a football player. This guy wins football games. This is the guy Rex wanted because he can win with Tim Tebow because he's a football player. He has been set free. This will be great for Tebow and even greater for the New York Jets. We're five minutes in. We've yet to hear one word from Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> You're speechless. I got you. I can't believe this has happened. I, I can't believe this has happened. I can't believe that Tim Tebow is coming to Gotham City. I, I, <laughs> I can't believe it. I, well, no, this, this, despite Skip's proclamation he'll be the starter, you, you, Mike Tannenbaum you, 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 was just you, you, on with you, Mike, you, and Mike, you, he said, look, he's first, the well, Jets' first, GM. First, yeah, well, he well, said, first, clearly, first, he's first, the first, backup first, quarterback. Yeah, what does he have to say let, right let, now? Let me see this. Let me say this. <clears throat> Mike Tannenbaum is a complete waste of time. I think that he is a good executive, mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of interviewing on the air, I think he's somebody that should be banned from talking to the media. He has absolutely nothing to say ever. He never reveals anything. Well, he did and, say and, that and Drew Stanton it, it, was brought listen, in to be listen, the number two, listen, but now listen, he's listen, the number three. Listen, listen, exactly. That's news. Everything that he says, trust me, the opposite is true. The man does, just does it, it, it's just a waste of time talking to him. What I will tell you is, Tim Tebow, to me, is not bad. He's god-awful. And the fact that the New York Jets would bring him into Gotham City is not only an exercise in cruelty towards Tim Tebow because, my God, he's going to be exposed under the bubble of Gotham City of New York, the bright lights of Broadway and everything like that, not to mention Sodom and Gomorrah, but I won't go there. <laughs> what is going to happen is, or to me, rather, this solidifies, is a level of ineptitude, a level of futility that the New York Jets has enjoyed, have enjoyed for over 40 years. This is the reason why they haven't been to the Super Bowl since Joe Namath took them there in 1968. This is the reason why they haven't won anything. This is the reason why they are second-tier second status. And this is the reason why the New York Giants will always be the team in New York. The New York Jets franchise today, I'm not saying forevermore, I'm not saying for always, but today they are an absolute joke. They are a complete waste of my time. Because to bring in Tim Tebow, you have told me 
that you are more interested in a sideshow than anything like that. It's a sideshow. It's a gimmick. That's what it is. You and your followers. It's almost like having five million Twitter followers. Well, you know what? You know, I look at, I look at it and I think about Kim Kardashian. You know what I mean? I, other than the fact that she is fine. But the point is, she does have about seven million followers. You know, that has something to do with her having her own reality show. That has something to do with her having a perfume line, clothing line, or whatever the case may be. And that's the same thing with Tim Tebow. Do you have substance, acting ability, dancing ability, singing ability? No. In Tim Tebow's case, do you have football ability? No. Not as a quarterback. Time no, out. But, Time but, out. Wait, 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 hold on. I let you speak for five okay. minutes. I know. I let you speak but, for but five minutes. But you can't get away I with Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. Excuse me. You Listen. cannot get away with that. She is fine. Did, did she, she go, is, did she she go eight and fine. five last year with 14 touchdowns, you know what, six some, interceptions? Some would say if you're looking at the category that I'm looking yeah, at, she's okay. 12 and 0. Okay. But what I'm trying to say to you is this. The fact is, is when you look at Tim Tebow as a quarterback, not as a football player, I didn't mean to say that, not as a football player, specifically as a throwing quarterback, it's a waste of time. Then when you take into account the fact that they were supposed to be protecting Mark Sanchez, that we're supposed to be shielding him and nurturing him and allowing him to grow, clearly that was all bogus now. Because we I all agree. know. I we agree. All know, You're right. We all know the second this dude throws a couple of incompletions, you're going to have people clamoring for Tim Tebow. It is a complete joke. It is not worthy of an NFL, you know, I, I'm talking about a, a football storyline, but the point is it's the biggest thing going today because the New York Jets have reduced them show, themselves to sideshow status and whatever they get from this day forward, they will deserve because they brought this on themselves just like I brought this on myself. It's, it's, this is a very depressing day for me. I, I just must. Okay, you know what you also brought on yourself? What? Just a few days ago on ESPNNewYork.com. Well, it ran on full.com. You wrote a column saying that the New York Jets were foolish to extend Mark Sanchez because you don't buy Mark Sanchez. I agree. Okay, so what's the problem here? Well, they had an opportunity and they seized the opportunity. I, I must admit that you, I, I, I don't think you're understanding the magnitude of what I'm trying to say. As much as I. Think, and don't get me wrong, I don't think that Sanchez lacks in ability, per se. I just think he is what he is. And my point was... And not a fit for the Jets. Well, well, no, no, it's not that he's not a fit for the Jets. It's just that to afford him the contract extension just because you were talking to Peyton Manning. My column was about, wait a minute, this dude still has stuff to prove. Why are you pacifying him? Right. Why are you coddling him? Yeah. That's what my column was about. But even saying that, understand, to me... Mark Sanchez is almost Joe Montana compared to Tim Tebow. That's how I feel about it. So to me, it's like it, this. I never in my wildest dream, you got me here, Skip. You got me here. I never in my wildest dreams, Joker, with that Joker look on your face right there. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that the day well, I thought Tim Tebow would land someplace. I thought somebody like Jacksonville would be stupid enough to sit there and bring him on board and say, hey, it's a starting job. I never dreamed in my wildest dreams that this man would end up in New York. New York? Gotham City? You yes, said Sodom and Gomorrah? New Hello. York? I mean, how could you do my, this? My turn. How could you do my this? Turn. Go ahead. Tim Tebow belongs in New York City. Why? Because he will light up to the stage that has the brightest spotlight because no player in the history of sports has been under a hotter, brighter spotlight since he was in about ninth grade than this guy has. LeBron was in there, but I think Tim, just because he plays the sport of football, has gotten more intense exposure, more scrutiny, more criticism, not I dare say. Than LeBron. I don't know. Not, 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 no. I don't know. Tim Tebow he has received, I was hearing... Coming out of high school, LeBron not, was the truth, and the first game... Well, hey, I, I was... No, he dropped 25 points. We knew he was I was there. hearing he was about on the map in the ninth grade. I was, hear, was. I was hearing about Tim Tebow in ninth grade. Not like we heard about LeBron. Okay, but yeah, nothing but football, like that. Yeah, Scrutiny, intensity, it. criticism has Tim Te No one outside of Tim Tebow has experienced that and handled it better than Tim Tebow has. Uh, he will light on, up to the New York But media. let's be fair. No one with Tim Tebow's skill set has ever been hyped as much. Usually people... Wait, wait, you hold on, hold on. Usually people... I know it's national championship. I know it's stats. And no, the two of them. With the Denver, yeah. Denver Bar yeah, no, no, yeah, but the first one, I mean, yeah, listen... But he participated. Gonna, yeah, he participated. What I'm saying to you is, is that Tim T... Usually when you get that kind of hype, you are a superstar. 
There are no questions about your skill set. So the fact that Tim Tebow got scrutiny is because he had people bloviating about him as if he was the second coming when he, they knew his skills were marginal. That's the difference. Well, why, 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 Let's be fair. Who, Let's who be beat, fair. Who beat Sam Bradford oh, no, no, in the no, no, fourth no, no, quarter no, no, of the no, national No, 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 no. That's, not where, that's not where we're going here. We're oh. talking, we're talking eye test individual skills. I'm not questioning any. I have never questioned Tim Tebow's accomplishments. What I am saying to you is that the eye test, when you look at his skill set, you don't compare him to Sam Bradford. You don't compare him to Cam Newton. You don't compare him to a lot of dudes. Now, his record, in terms of his accomplishments, that's a different story. But in terms of his skill, nobody with those level of marginal skills has ever been that hyped. That is a fact. You cannot dispute that. Okay. All right. So, okay. So let's go to Sodom and Gomorrah here. Oh. I, I must say, just for the record, I, I do go to church every Sunday right in the middle of Manhattan. Yeah. So, so there are churches there, believe it or a not. You, you go and... In, in Christian a, Cultural Center, yeah, Flatbush Avenue, there Brooklyn. Go. There you Absolutely, go. Absolutely, all, all right, the time. In the New York area, for sure. And what bigger and better stage for Tim Tebow to spread the word, I mean the word of God, than New York City, the biggest right. apple. Seriously, there, well, if, no, that's no where you're going to go. Okay, I'm there, going there. there you, can, you can, okay. and there's no debate now. Okay, you know, I'm not disputing and, anything you're saying remember, there. Remember, you're right. Jesus associated with the sinners. Right? That's where you wanted to go. That's you don't think Tebow says, thank you, God, for No, but now, now you're I, taking I, it away from the football, okay, which has bothered He you. went to Sodom and Gomorrah. I no, know. You, he's but right. He's he went right. there he's again, right. though. Skip is right, because that's exactly what I was saying. And we don't disagree there. I completely agree with you. I think that's one of the biggest reasons Tim Tebow is excited. And uh, if the reports are true, that he actually wanted to come to New York ahead of going back home to Jacksonville. Because, again, he is on the record saying that he is about saving souls. So if you're talking about Jacksonville, or New York City. I agree. I think it's safe to say that New York City needs a hell of a lot more soul okay. searching than Jacksonville just because of size alone. Know, no, my, just my because of size though, alone. If, if you're and, and temptation. That he chose and temptation. New York over Jacksonville for reasons other than football, yes. you in the past have had problems with him prioritizing anything I, over football. I agree, but I know that would be, have been part of his decision. No making. question. Okay. And a bigger part would have been that Rex Ryan talked to him and said, I love you, man. Yeah. I, I want you. You're my kind of football player. And, and again, back to, okay, New York is going to love this guy. You know New York City. I live there. You grew up there. He has the presence, the aura. It's not what he says. It's what he does to match the magnitude of New York City. But ultimately, the fans there are about performance. They will. And, and no, I mean, again, that's number one for fans. Okay, and I'm going to say it one more time. No quarterback has ever, ever been more unfairly treated on performance than Tim Tebow was last year. I have to see her every day. And again, I, I love you, man. Yeah. But, but every day you shame him as if he did nothing last year when on performance, on winning and losing football games, on fourth quarter comebacks. Have, have you ever seen a young player, a, a rookie starter, but, but, but do skip, better than this? But, but skip, no. But Skip, I love you too. Let's be clear. My issue with Tim Tebow, and I keep asking you to quote me accurately, my issue with Tim Tebow in terms of his performance was my questioning the right that he had to ever be in a position to Okay, perform. all right. It has never been about... I can't argue with seven and four. I can't argue with eight and five. I can't argue with taking over a team one and four. I can't argue with what he did to my Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. I can't argue with what he did to the Chicago Bears. I can't argue about what he did to the Jets on Thursday night with the 95-yard drive that made me want to throw up. I can't argue with any of that. What I can argue is when you tell me, when you, his biggest supporter, his biggest fan, comes out on the record, Steven, he's not a great practice player. Steven, his mechanics are questionable. Steven, his ability to throw the football is not really there. He's got a lot of work to do. Steven, his football IQ is not that great. You said those things, not now, me. Now, quote me. No, 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 let me finish. What I'm saying to you is I never said those things because I didn't know it. I waited for you and others to say it, and then I repeated what you said. If you say those things to me, then obviously I'm going to say to you, well, how the hell did he ever get to become a starting quarterback? That's my issue. So let's when we say the record, okay. and we talk about, because he, it's not just you, it's New Yorkers, it's people in Denver, it's the people in Jacksonville or wherever fans Tim Tebow have and wherever they are, University of Florida, I get all of these tweets and all of this stuff. I don't mind being held accountable for what I say and what I honestly feel. What I mind is when it's shifted, all right, and it's misconstrued. I have never questioned 
those things you pointed out. What I have said was, how are you in that position if those deficiencies are even what your fans say okay, okay. about because, you? That's me. Because That's me. he was in the position because Josh McDaniels was shrewd enough to look at the tape in college, to look at the achievements and say, hey, you guys are all nuts. I'm, I'm not talking about him being drafted. I'm not talking about him. He got drafted drafted. in the first round. You yeah, said I'm not talking the about, opportunity. But I'm not questioning okay. that. I'm saying that once he was in camp, you well, well, constantly, re, you no, no, constantly no. told us he was demoted okay. to fourth string. Okay, but wait a second. Last year, at the end of the year, after Josh got fired, mm -hmm. Tebow got to play three real NFL games. Yeah. And he was really good. And I kept saying every day, did you see Tebow? And nobody did because nobody cared yet. Mm -hmm. I said, he can play. He showed you in the black hole against their arch rival against Oakland. He beat Houston with a second-half comeback. Matt Schaub and the Texans, he beat them as a rookie quarterback in his second start. So then I was saying, what was shameful was Elway took over the team and demoted him to reportedly fourth string. Okay, so you say, how did he get the opportunity this year? He'd already proven himself. I mean, he did it. Yeah, I but if you go to games and you play three games on the NFL level at the end of a season, that is going into the tank because you aren't going to the postseason. And then we bring you into training camp mm -hmm. and we give you an opportunity to compete. And everybody in training camp and preseason or whatever the okay. game, not preseason, but anybody in training camp, if okay. they're out playing okay. you, I, then, I then, then Don Elway okay. has the right to make that call. Okay, all right, so, so back to the Jets. Here you have Rex Ryan, who, as I said, he believes in what? Ground and pound. If Rex could run the ball every play, every game, he would do it. It's, it's how he grew up in the business under his dad, okay? Yep. It's, it's play defense, control the ball, win the football Never game. won his dad a Super Bowl. Okay. Well, I'm, okay, I'm just As a saying. head coach. Okay, he wanted as a defensive yeah, as, as coordinator. As a defensive okay. coordinator, yes. Okay, but I'm saying that's Rex. With a team that was built that same way. That's it right. Was built Stellar defense. Yes, it was. It was, it was Walter yeah, and yeah. McMahon, those that, boys. That's correct. Okay, so you don't think Tebow fits Rex perfectly because he, what did, what did Tebow do for the, that for the Broncos Glad last year? Glad you asked year? that question. No dispute there from a football yeah. perspective. Here's where your problem is. You have been on this set, and you have talked about Rex Ryan. I know I'm a fan of Rex Ryan, but we're not a fan of everything he does. No. You have pointed out how Rex Ryan sometimes resembles a caricature of himself. Off and the field. That's right. And he's yeah. become a Sasha. Well, not just off the field. I'm talking about press conferences, post-game yeah, yeah, conferences. Yeah, no, Those, no, no, okay. Just some of the stuff going out of sure. his mouth. So the Jets grabbed the attention of New York City even before they made it to two AFC Championship games because of Rex Ryan's mouth and because of the kind of atmosphere that he created. You have been on this set and you have acknowledged that the, the dysfunctionality that existed within the Jets locker room, yeah. he had a lot to do with because he led a bunch of renegades. He yeah. turned them basically into a bunch of renegades yeah. and it became you know, problematic you know and too much for him. Now you got Tim Tebow. Okay, so what I'm saying is Tim Tebow's personality is not like the those guys, but the problem is, is that he in and of himself is a sideshow because of the attention okay. he creates, and he's already got teammates tweeting about why is he okay. here. It's a problem. You know why? It's because a problem. Rex lets the inmates run his asylum. He's a player's but coach. That hasn't worked so, so far. Okay. Guess what? Who's the leader of the football team? What's the leadership position? Can your leader quarterback. be a quarterback, though? Okay. He, the starting quarterback can be. Are you well, telling me when he seizes Tebow. control, Tim Tebow will seize control of this I need locker a question. room. I, I got he a will question. turn I just, it around. I just around. got a question. I just got one question. Are you going to sit up here on national television? Yes. And tell me that Tim Tebow, this young boy, is going to walk into the locker room in Gotham City with a bunch of men and basically change the whole culture of the Jets locker room? It will happen by midseason when he seizes the starting job. He has to be the starter to do this. Right. But once he does, because they all know in their heart of hearts, Mark Sanchez is a mistake maker. Tim Tebow is a playmaker. What did Sanchez do in the game at Denver on Thursday night? He threw the pick six that got Denver back up. in the yeah. game. Okay. I just want to look at the control room. Oh, yeah, first take. I need you to record that. You constantly protect them. You sit up there, you coddle him the way that everybody coddles Tim Tebow. You coddle Skip Tebow. Don't lose this tape. Save it. Save it today, okay? And don't lose it because, excuse me, I'm going to be calling for it, God willing. I'm going to be calling for it in a few months. Do not lose the tape. Tim Tebow's going to take over the New York Jets. All right, He's gonna very be good. You heard York it here first. He's going to take over their locker room. He's going to do it. save this Book tape. it. Because it will become deja voodoo for Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> this will be his worst nightmare ongoing week after week after week. I will season. confess, if Tim Tebow does in New York 
what he did in Denver over that seven to eight game stretch, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to you, you know what will happen? You won't come in no, to work. You know what will happen? I don't know. You know what? They will rename Times Square Tim Square. Tebow's. How about that? No, it would be Tebow's. No, Tim Square.